Hi, I'm Andy Richter, and uh, I just spilled my guts to Kara. Uh, said far too much. And uh, I don't think I'm going to get canceled. Uh, it's more just like uh, all of my loved ones won't speak to me anymore. Hi friends, welcome back to Really Famous. Today I'm talking to actor, comedian, writer, and talk show announcer, Andy Richter, who was Conan O'Brien's sidekick for many years on Late Night, The Tonight Show, and Conan on TBS. I asked Andy to be on my show because he has a podcast that I like. It's called The Three Questions, and he seems like a nice guy. As you'll see in just a minute, we start talking about his podcast, which is a long form interview show, kind of like mine. And he explains that the original concept was to be sort of like a mini therapy session, but it actually tends to skew in the direction of work because he's not really into pushing people into talking about personal things. Well, I guess for me, it's sort of the opposite. With my guests, I do talk about work a bit. But it's those personal things that really come out in my talks and that I really get into, which is why it sometimes feels like a therapy session. So as you'll see, we start off talking about work. You'll hear about what it was really like for him working on Conan's shows from the vantage point of Conan's sidekick. And it's an interesting vantage point for sure. But then we shift gears and get into the personal stuff. You'll hear a big reveal or two And for sure, you'll know where Andy's been, where he is now, and where he's going, not only in his career, but in his personal life. And that makes me happy. Speaking of therapy, here is a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. You know how I feel about therapy. I am a therapist, and I've talked about it many times on the show. Therapy can be a life changer. If you're not feeling great, you know you need a little help, but you're not sure where to go. Where do you even find a therapist? Try BetterHelp. BetterHelp will match you up with a therapist. You can do a video chat. You can do a phone session. You can even text your therapist. And if it doesn't feel like the right match, BetterHelp will find a new therapist for you. Get started now. Simply go to betterhelp.com slash really famous. Get started today and make sure you use that link betterhelp.com slash really famous because you'll get 10% off your first month just for really famous listeners. That's betterhelp.com slash really famous. I'd like to give a big ginormous thank you and shout out to Tim and Michelle, my friends at Soundbox LA, which is the recording studio in Los Angeles where Andy and I taped today's show. Tim has this perfect little studio where voice actors and podcasters and the like go to record audio with really good equipment in a relaxed and friendly setting. It's one of three studios in LA with a new one opening soon in Colorado. It's a talent-centric, talent-focused boutique recording studio owned and operated by voice actors. So they hosted me for a couple of other talks too with Jason Ritter and also Sharon Lawrence. And I knew that when I invited Andy in, we would be in good hands, which we were. You can check us out lounging on their studio couch, all mic'd up on my Instagram and Facebook feeds, or by watching our talk on YouTube or Facebook Watch. Links to all of those things are in today's show notes. And now, Andy and me. So let's get back to your podcast. Uh, Okay. So the three questions I've been listening for a while, and I have to tell you, I think you're an excellent interviewer. Thank you. Thank you. I um I I do like it. I I'm uh it was, you know, when I started doing it, I I obviously I sat next to people being interviewed for many, many, many hours and um but I never had a big urge to do it myself. Like I just kind of uh I don't know. I mean, maybe it was just you know, it's like when your sibling does something, you don't. So it makes you feel like, nah, I don't want to do that, because Conan always did. And I was like, nah, good, let him, because you know, the, 
especially on a show like that. I'm lucky. I, I talk to mostly just to people that I want to talk to. I mean, very rarely is it kind of like, it'd be really good if you would talk to this person kind of stuff. Whereas in a late night talk show, that's constant. So a lot of the people that you talk to on a late night talk show, they're not a lot of fun to talk to. And they're, there's a lot of work, you know, involved in making six or seven minutes, you know, yeah. very critical short minutes be punchy and good and watchable, you know, mm-hmm. um, which is, you know, like the way conversations are like, you've got seven minutes, get it all out. Uh, so I, it wasn't anything I was ever interested in. And then, you know, it just seemed like, uh, podcasts present themselves to you and after a while I was like well all right I'll do a podcast and I had this concept of interviewing people in a way that uh was meant to encourage amusing self you know amusing introspection um amusing is that how you sold it or well, yeah, amusing I mean, I'm introspection being kind of cheeky here but okay. um, but no kind of like what I said was I kind of want to trick people into having a little mini therapy session um, because that's kind of what therapy is. It's looking at, looking at your past, looking at your present, wondering why, how you are like this and what changes can be made. And so the, I just wanted to kind of engineer a conversation in sort of into those topics. They tend to take a workplace related a lot because I'm not particularly comfortable with like really push, push, pushing into people's personal lives. Um, which, you know, it's probably to the detriment of my <laughs> listenership, but, um, I just asked kind of people like what, how they got here. And, you know, and I mean, it is, it, it's a talk show, it's a podcast, but it's a talk show. So it's, you know, promoting things. Um, so yeah, so it's going to end up being sort of, uh, showbiz centered. Um, but after doing it for a while too, I, I've grown to like interviewing people. Um, and I, and I do think I've like kind of, I mean, I know I paid attention to how I was doing and made conscious choices to do things differently. If I heard something that annoyed me that I was doing, say repeatedly, I'd, you know, I made a point to stop it. I'm from when I started interviewing people, like now I feel like very present and very able to kind of just keep the conversational ball in the air and, you know, and be engaged with what they're talking about right now while thinking about the thing I want to ask next. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've learned how to do all that. Uh, and it's, I mean, and it's fun. It's not anything I ever set out to do, but it's, uh, right. it's fun and it's, it's, um, I'm proud of the podcast and, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm, uh, I always felt like, I felt like a dilettante kind of starting doing a podcast in the first place. Cause I, and I've talked about this before that I know people that were real, like pioneers in podcasting, which sounds corny, but it's just the truth. Um, that like really started podcasting before I even knew what it was. And I just always felt like a Johnny come lately, but I mean, no. What, the what are you talking about? World, everybody has already done everything I know, before. I know. Does that I know, mean you can never do anything? No, I know, but it's just it's just how like my mind works. I'm just saying it's why I didn't like jump in, uh, you know, super enthusiastically. Um, and also, too, I'm I'm like I'm not a huge podcast uh, consumer. Um, because I, well, mainly because I listen to Howard Stern. So okay. the time that I would be in the car listening to podcasts, which I do occasionally, I'm usually listening to Howard. I gotcha. Yeah. So it is interesting, though, because I did, I feel like you kind of deflected a little bit when I was telling you how good you are as an interviewer. Oh, thank you. But let's go back to how you sat and watched interviews for so long. Yeah. So, right. So those are... Th- Late night is totally different from the podcast. I always say to people, like, I am the antithesis of a late night talk show. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's a talk show. 
but it's totally different. Unrehearsed, we don't do any of that pre-interview. Yeah. Just like you, I pick who's going to be on my show. Yeah. And occasionally it's like a favor or whatever else, right. but I feel like most of the time I'm like, hmm, do I want this person on my show or who do I feel like talking to? Yes. Who seems like they would be really interested. And it, yeah, and I mean, and sometimes it's like it's not anybody that I knew, but somebody told me and so, you know, I I can't and and I like I say I've never talked to anybody that I really didn't want to talk to uh-huh. because you know you can there's people that I, there's varying levels of enthusiasm because there's varying levels I mean I always like it best when I'm talking to somebody that I'm more familiar with mm-hmm. um, and there's some people that I don't even know who they are and and there's people that I you know were based on. Uh, recommendations of friends, you know, you got to check this guy out. Chris Fleming was somebody like that, the comedian Chris Fleming. I didn't really know Chris. I'd seen a couple of his videos, but I took a, you know, I watched some of his stuff and then had him on and he's just, uh, you know, now he's a constant source of amusement uh for me he's fantastic oh, so that's cool. um by the way martin star uh-huh i was cracking up with the two of you oh thank you i was walking my dog i believe and do you remember that you, what he called you out on you pronounced it paramount instead of paramount oh yeah you remember yeah. that uh, yeah yeah that was so funny and then he was like <laughs> I don't remember exactly how he said it, but he was like, oh, do you think you didn't get the gig or something, because, whatever the topic was, because you mispronounced the name because you called it Paramount? <laughs> <laughs> and you handled it beautifully. You went with it. You laughed at yourself a little bit. And then you didn't realize that it was still funny to me. It was yeah, just yeah, a yeah. natural exchange of two people, yeah. which to me has such value. And I still just feel like, no, Paramount, that's... <laughs> it's Paramount. It's Paramount. <laughs> Uh, you know, I mean, that's just, I don't know if it's Midwestern. I don't know if it's, you know, I mean, there's just some of those words where people have a slightly different take on it. But so yeah, funny. it's Paramount. I don't care. All right. So what uh, did it's you. It's going to be Paramount forever. <laughs> okay. I'm going to, fr- now I'm going to change it and call it Paramount. Yeah. Just out of respect for you. Yeah. And everybody I know is going to start. It's got it. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Get that Midwestern mush mouth going. <laughs> Okay, so what did you see when Conan was interviewing people? What did you observe and say, yeah, like what are some of the things you noticed that maybe people don't realize about people coming on shows Um, like that? Well, I mean, I was in a weird... My position is a little bit, was a little weird because it didn't, it used to be kind of a standard of the paradigm, you know, there'd be the host and then there'd be the guy, Mm -hmm. uh, and but there's a lot of people that weren't used to that so there was a lot of people who would come out and i would get ignored and it could either be it could either like they'd just make a beeline to him and and it could either and most of the time i think it was just nerves so it never really annoyed me but then there were other people where they weren't nervous at all and they were just kind of rude and I always just kind of made a, uh, I mean, it's not a deep character judgment, but I, I always felt like, all right, you know, you're not blessing me with your presence, mm. whoever you are, you know, you know, I'm fine, don't pay attention, you know. Um, yeah, because you kind of got that bird's eye view because you weren't, they were probably so tuned into what they're supposed to say or how they're supposed to be with Conan and the camera. Yeah that you got to kind of see more than they would have been, than the camera or Conan would be able to pick up on. Yeah. I mean, well, I guess. I mean, I have a terrible angle at them. I'm looking like at the back of their head, (laughs) you know, behind their ear. Um, But, uh, you know, I mean, you do end up feeling... You sit there and it's not anything... You sit there for long enough. And you start to really understand what it's like to sit out there in front of a studio audience for an hour. And it really can inform you about what you can't, you know, well, basically what will work and what won't work. Like there'd be lots of things. And usually it was of comedy things, less so than, than interview things. But um, you can sit there and you can know like that joke is not, that joke is going to die. 
and everyone would be like, well, it's so funny. And you're like, mm, if you, if you'd sat out here in front of these people and did this, you'd know, like you, this is not something that they'll, mm -hmm. that they'll like. Um, and, and I mean, and you know, I think some, sometimes with interviews, you can kind of, um, it can be a different perspective than it can be to the audience. I'm trying to think like, I'm trying to think of like really awkward interviews with like, there have been a couple times where there was like somebody that seems to be under duress, you know, like that's going through, going through something and uh, they've been put on the show to be interviewed and they come out and it becomes very evident like, this is a, this is not good. This person, you know, and like, it's only a couple of three times. So like what, like who's an example? I'm not going to say names. Okay. But people yeah, can no. probably guess if they remember. They uh, might have picked could up be, on it. Yeah. Yeah. So you felt I mean, like there are some, there are some, especially from the early days, there are some famously kind of slightly cuckoo interviews that I think are on the internet. But I, th I don't know if that, it's got to feel awkward in the audience, but it feels, at least to me, and, and to Conan too, you feel such sympathy for this person mm. that it's not, I don't think it's the same as like, whoa, you know, people nervously tittering at somebody that's being super weird on a talk Check show that. interview. But when you're sitting there next to him, you're like, just let's get through this, hun, and then get you back to your people. Um, yeah, that's, I would feel for that person yeah, a yeah. lot. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's interesting. I do think it is one of the hardest things is what people tell me is to go on late night. They love it because it's fun. Yeah. But at the same time, I think it really is also just so nerve wracking. It's weird. It, it, it is weird. I mean, I, I have a, weird, a skewed perspective on it now, obviously, from having done a gazillion hours of it. But I mean, when you yeah, your first few times and, and it's different, too, as a guest. Um I mean, I, the first time I was on David Letterman, I it, I realized when I was done that I had never really looked at anything. And I, and that my image in my mind of the interview was just his mouth and nose. Like I just focused on that and I would maybe turn out to the audience, but without any kind of acuity, you know. And I, because I, I remember thinking like, what was the chair like? Mm. Don't yeah. Know. Well, how yeah, would yeah. you know? Because it know all, all. Well, I mean, but you're like, just getting like, through like, it. Like, look at this. This is a blue couch. But that's because you know? you're relaxed. Yeah, yeah. It's not. Like, but it was. But I. I mean, at that. You know, and it gets yeah. better as it, time goes on. But it was. You know, it was my first time on David Letterman, uh, and that was meaningful. Um, so yeah, I mean, and it, it, yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's weird to come, and especially. And they're just so pressurized, almost in kind of a way that's unfair. Um, and that I think used to be more fair when nobody gave a shit about late night. And like, you could be, there was only two options and they could go, you know, and like the Tonight Show was like an hour and a half every night. That's like, that's a lot of airtime. And when you look at old Tonight Show's, they weren't afraid of anybody flipping over. <laughs> they took their time and... You know, we'll be back with another, ep you know, like another segment of, you know, Sophia Loren telling about vacation stories or, you know, and, and that you just doesn't work today. It's, yeah. It's gotta yeah. be, gotta get out there. You gotta hit a laugh, quick, quick, gotta quick. hit a laugh, gotta hit a laugh. And, uh, and then you're done. That's the other thing about being, you cannot, I never got over when I was interviewed, not sitting next to one, but the clock that's when you, that's in your head when you're being interviewed, it, it's over in 30 seconds, it seems like. And yeah. It's, you know, it's whatever, eight minutes or something. Right. You know? Isn't it weird, though, that you can be interviewed and you can talk for however many minutes and then you can leave and feel like you don't know what you said. Yeah, you don't yeah. know what you talked about. Yeah. But somehow your brain functioned enough yes. to actually have yes. a legitimate conversation of some kind. It's, yeah, I mean, you Human just kind of go on, wild. yeah, yeah, and I mean, it, it, and it's, I think it's all, you know, it's all fight or flight states, and I don't think you're like, I think maybe your brain is protecting itself when the stress level goes up, Yeah, it's like, I never know the difference between Ram and Rom, but you know, like how one is just always kept temporarily going, and it's like, 
if you're under stress, your brain goes like, put that over there with the disposable memories, you know, and so we can just shake it off and be done. It's, but it's, you know, it's like when you drive somewhere. I mean, I do this. I'll drive home and I'll be like, when did I pass mm, same the Marriott? Thing. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, I was, uh, was I even looking, you know, or, you know. But here's the weird thing is that's probably when you're totally relaxed yeah. that you forget. Right. You're not there. So that's like the opposite. So it is weird how yeah. your brain would do the same thing. It for is, two. Yeah. It is like you turn off your eyes yeah. except for just the minimal input of like, I'm running off the road, you know, like, like you know, or there's <laughs> right. brake lights, you know. Right, right. So, Hopefully you would wake up yes, for that yes, exact yes. thing. Snap out of it. So what would you say, looking back, what, what was one of the highlights, like the best times in your life? It could be personal, professional reasons or oh. both. Or what do you feel like was a really good time? Mm. Gosh. Well, uh, when I was in Chicago and uh, and doing improv very regularly with very top notch people, um, that was really fun and exciting. And uh, you know, people talk about like being in the best shapes of their best shape of their lives. My brain was in the best shape of its life because I was doing. I don't know, probably eight or nine hours of improv comedy on, if not 10, uh, on stage every week. That's a lot. Week yeah. in and week out. And, um, and then all, and just how much fun that was and how fulfilling that was and how exciting that was to then also kind of start thinking I maybe could do this as a job, you know? Um, so you started to believe in yourself. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, I'd say when um, you're talking about like when it was really, really good. Uh, I'm talking about whatever comes yeah, to yeah, mind. No, I know. But I mean, but like, you know, the Conan show happening was a big deal. You uh -huh. know, I was I got a job and I was on TV every night. But it was it was like it wasn't like a. a a beam of light from heaven and I was this, you know, I ascended to some, like, no, no, I got put to work, you know? Oh, okay. So it was really fun and really exciting, but it was also like... Grueling? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, break down into tears at times from the stress of, of how much work that show was initially because we didn't know, we didn't know what we were doing. We were just like, let's... And, you know, and this is also... This is kind of, you know, was inspired by Robert Smigel and, and Conan, uh, their work ethic. And it's just, look, we get, you know, we got to put as much comedy, jam as much comedy into this show as we can. And, um, and we, we'd, you know, some of the, I mean, I, not so much me, but I mean, I'd go out on, a, for my experience, my, like my long haul stuff was go out on a weekend, shoot a remote at the whatever it's a uh, Arkansas State Fair uh fly home on Sunday go to work on Monday and uh start editing that piece start breaking down all the footage myself choosing selects going through you know screening the footage choosing selects and then stay depending on what day we needed it if we wanted to run it Tuesday I would be there Monday until that piece was edited yeah, that's a lot. And that can be like two, three o'clock in the morning. And then I come back and I present the piece that I shot all weekend. And it's, you know, it's like I, I worked. That's, there, yeah. There was, there was one point, there was at one point, and I mean, you know, everybody works hard at different points. But I mean, but this was, this was really, it was really consuming. And like I say, it was really stressful. And, and after we got the show up and running, we calmed down and we were like, we don't have to do, you know. Oh, so it was before, it was at the very beginning. It's at the very beginning, like. yeah. So yeah. did you have moments where you're like, why am I doing this and I really need to escape? No, I did. I did. I think I just was so young and, and I don't know, but I mean, I, when I say ambitious, I don't mean like. I, you know, want to become rich and famous. I mean, ambitious in that, like, I'm working on this show and I want to make this show really good and mm -hmm. I want to be a part of something uh, just that's great. Yeah. It's good. You You're know? passionate and high motivated. Quality. Yeah. yeah. I want to put out high quality product, you know, high quality comedy. Um, so, yeah, that anyway, but 
that was a that was an amazing, exciting time, but it wasn't like one of the, uh-huh. you know, because uh-huh. it's, you know. It's so funny because people, I think, a lot of times it looks like, oh, my gosh, what a life you had, yeah, yeah. right? It was you just go on TV yeah. and present these things. They have no idea what went into it. Yeah. You know, the, not only the hours, but the stress of it yeah. and the fact that you were doing all that yourself. Yeah. And there's a lot. Well, and I did it for a, I did it for a, the first few years and then I kind of started to, you know, just realize, like, if I go home at 830 p.m. from getting here at 10 in the morning, you know, like, yeah, yeah, nobody's going to fire me if I go home after 10 hours of being here. So whereas before it would feel like, no, no, it's all hands on deck. You got to, you know. You got to produce. You got to get things on the board. You know, like the mm. the the board, which would be each each uh, days. You know, all the days of the week and the different spots we had to fill with comedy and interviews and stuff. Um. So yeah, it was it was exciting, but it wasn't like you know deeply, <laughs> you know, like just calm and happy and good and uh-huh, sunny. Uh, uh-huh. I would say when my kids were little. Uh, and I don't know exactly the time, but that was like a really pretty, pretty good time, you know. Um, like a zen sort of. Yeah, feel. yeah. Um, and then honestly, right now, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I have a very, very happy personal life right now. Uh, I, I'm engaged to be married to somebody that I am very much in love with, and congratulations. Thank you. And is that uh, new? Well, yeah, new-ish. I mean, I it, we've been engaged. I mean, it's, you know, it's like one of those things where it's like kind of in my personal life. And I mean, how do I broach it? I keep thinking because I want to, you know, just like a, write a tweet about yeah, we yeah. were at the grocery store. Um, or, you know, like my, my my fiance has a two and a half year old daughter. And so I'm I'm gonna be ha- I have a two I have now have a yes. two and a half year old daughter. Congratulations, not, thank you. Not, Dad. Not officially, but you know, but yeah. we're working on it. Um, and it just it's I I there's times that I want one to just make. I was with a two and a half year old in the drugstore, and then I realized oh, I gotta explain how I got a two and a half year old into the drugstore. So I keep thinking I should just like make a tweet that like, oh yeah, by the way, I will be referring to a fiance. Uh, from now on because I got engaged, but so that's so, right. Cause you haven't, I don't feel like I've heard you talk a lot about the fact that you're divorced now yeah. and it's different. Life is different, but you haven't mentioned that. So, so now it's like building up, I guess, for you internally thinking, yeah. when do I yeah, say it? But is it that like, big of a deal? Who cares? No, it's not that big of a deal, but it's just, but it feels it feels like walking into a restaurant and yelling, I'm engaged, everybody. You know, like, like you're just presuming that everyone's, it's, it's also all Midwestern humility bullshit. It's all well, just so like, explain that. not just not tooting your own horn. If you, you know, like kind of, it, it's a very, it, and I mean, and it exists in lots of places. There was a, a when I was worked in New Zealand, they call it tall poppy syndrome. Which you, I know what that yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Like if, which for people that don't know, mm-hmm. the poppies are all supposed to grow at one level, and if somebody grows up too high, you gotta chop off their head. I have a problem with that. Yeah, I don't like that. Let the poppies grow yeah, in their no, own I know, space. I know, but it's but it and the kiwi version of it is anybody they are excited for anybody from New Zealand that gets any kind of world fame. Uh, and then they can't wait to destroy, mm. to, you know, to undercut them because oh, oh, we're proud of you. Look who's too big for his britches, and that's a very midwestern dynamic too. About like oh, look at you, Mister Mister Somebody, huh? You know, it always feels like wait, are you complimenting me or insulting me? Yeah, you know? I think and, it's an insult. And we do that. We do that to our. I mean, I think. That's I do that to myself. Uh, I'm like, oh, Mr. Big Shot thinks everyone cares, you know. But people do care because people care about you. Yeah. And so they like to, They, I'm sure so many people feel like they know you personally. I, yeah, I mean, I know that and it's. They're invested I mean, in you. I got my own neuroses. I got my own bullshit. Um, What's your uh, own? I mean, just that kind of thing, you know. Like yeah. Being, um, 
like sometimes like a what seems like a humility that's sometimes just dumb and not realistic and like yeah okay but also too with something like getting engaged um it's a, it's corny and it's a cliche but like I do want to protect my personal life yeah and I don't want to I don't want to serve it up as content um and how does she feel about it She's, uh, well, you know, we haven't, you know, she's, she said things like, you know, you haven't mentioned me. Uh, you haven't mentioned me on Twitter, but she's usually saying, usually say, was she saying it in a teasing way? Because we've had real conversations where I'll say, I don't really think you want me to trot you out in front of my Twitter users. Like, they're not all... And all nice. And... Yeah, they're not all nice and supportive. So, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'll am i crow about you to anyone within earshot, but I'll probably keep it under, keep you under my hat a little bit more out in the world. And there again, that it feels grandiose to even say that because it's, again, but it's it's just a fact. Yeah, because the fact is if you, you have millions. If you put something out in the world, yeah. somebody will turn it shitty. If you put things like personal things and it's, it's funny. I mean, I hear it on the, on the Stern show all the time. Somebody will just make a fairly human admission of something, some little foible or some little frailty. And then it's just off to the races. And it's not even so much the people on the show. It's like fans just, you know, like that's the guy that pooped his pants where it's like, I just, I thought, yeah. I thought we were all sharing here. So, I but mean, you know that, what happens, me of? that happens on the internet like crazy. Right. Where, you know. But those are the people also that you're hearing that from. Whereas for every person who's doing that, there are a bazillion more people who are not and who are like happy for you, whose hearts are blowing up. And I, listen, again, there again, that's kind of part yeah. of the crazy of what I do for a living. It's standing in front of an audience of a thousand faces and 999 are laughing and one sourpuss is right there and they're the only person you can see. Yeah. And if and that is a that's like a metaphor for a neuroses that I have in me that I've been fighting for so many years. Like you know, look at the look at the big picture. Yeah. Don't get weighed down in the negatives because, you know, focusing on negatives especially when you're young can be a good way of making progress. Because, you you know, it's like this this part of the room is neat and clean. Why would I worry about that part of the room? I'm going to worry about the part of the room that's not neat and clean. And, and as a result, you only see yourself as sloppy and a mess. You don't see mm-hmm. the clean part of you. You don't see the organized part of you. Um, and so you got to, you know, you have to eventually shift that mechanism it's a pro- that's a process yeah yeah to where it's not just where you're not just seeing your life as all of the shortcomings yeah yeah well do you he- do you feel like you really hear genuinely the positives maybe not as much as or not as powerfully as but do you feel like do you sometimes say wow like i can't believe how uh no because you're never now i'm like setting you up for this the the problem that you have i'm trying to like you know oh no i'm very proud i'm very proud and i'm very um i can i can and i mean in a way that i am completely fine with and that i think is i'm completely and that is completely healthy is i can be very proud of myself for what i've done good because um i have and not and not just what I happened to be around while it happened. You know, like definitely things that I had input in that turned into good things that really matter to other people. Um, you know, there's like there's for me, there's always like a level of, you know, depending on from project to project when somebody says, I really love that show, I'll say thank you, but there's two kinds of thank you. One's it one is well, thank you, but I don't really have that much to do with it. And two is, well, thank you very much because I poured a bunch of sweat into that show. And a, a lot of how that show is, is based on my input. So thank you. You know, mm. like if you, you know, 
like if you thank the waiter for how the t- food tastes. Right. It's like the waiter thank the kitchen. You yes. Know? Um. So. Uh. I forget where I forget. Okay, well, yeah, yeah. well, let's. I'm gonna. I'm gonna circle back to the fact that you haven't really announced that you're engaged. But yeah. that's. So I do think that probably it starts to blow up in your head of like, well, how am I going to do this? But you know that at some point you're going to. Oh okay. yeah. No, it's going to happen. Real. I'm actually really pretty okay with it. Uh huh. And um. And 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 Jen. Jen is my fiance. Jen and I, I, we don't even, we don't rarely talk about it. Uh-huh. I mean, we are, you know, uh, our our friends and the people in our life know we're engaged. Um, and, uh, you know, and it's, it, it's, the whole situation isn't without its challenges with some members of my family. So that's another reason why, why I kind of, mm, that's, I'd be telling other people's story. If I was to tell that, okay. so I don't really want to, and also, I just know, I I know that it would be, I, I know that, that, that whatever the people involved wouldn't want me talking about mm-hmm. it, it would upset them, and I don't have any interest in upsetting. So are people. they working? Uh, you think it'll work out? Oh or, yeah, yeah. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. It's it's you know, uh. It's there's nothing more common in the world than people getting divorced, getting remarried, families combining, families blending. It's, it's not complicated. A, it's complicated, and there's a lot of steps to it, and there's a lot of uh, adjustments to be made, and and a lot of patience is required. Mm-hmm. So I think, and it's one of those things where years from now, yeah. it'll all be okay, and oh, you'll look back and remember absolutely, absolutely. there were struggles absolutely. for certain people more than others. I am, I am almost entirely confident. Yeah, of that. yeah. I mean, there's just enough worry, you know, because I'm human, and you know, there's just enough worry to keep me on my toes. But I mostly am like, it's gonna be fine. Yeah, you need a it's little bit, right? Fine. To yeah, keep yeah, you on yeah. your toes. Yeah. So how so Jen is not in entertainment or is she Uh well she's a, she actually is uh sorta she's in the music business more she's uh uh has her own company and she reps directors for music videos. Okay. Uh and commercials too but mostly for me she's been work you know you put on you know any YouTube music video channel she's like I did that one I did that one you know. That's cool. Yeah so she's she's you know worked on a lot of I mean, worked on, made the deal, but I mean, mm-hmm. but it's weird. Her end of the business too is, it's much more loosely defined. Where there's like some shoots that she has to show up and kind of make sure that they run on time, which my agents don't ever have to do right, that. You know? Right, right. Uh, yeah, I think that's a totally different. The music business, and it's one of the things she loves about it is that it's really loosey goosey sometimes. Okay, so she can kind of choose how involved and, to be. Yeah, and it's fun and exciting. You know, she said like commercials in comparison there's more money involved and there's like general, probably more general competency, but it's not as fun because you don't have like kind of, and I understand what she's talking about. Like a little bit of like a little bit of chaos can be kind of, exciting yeah Mm -hmm. yeah and keep again keep you on your toes yeah or maybe having a mix of both oh absolutely yeah you don't want yeah it's it's a yeah, the the gas and brake on that is yeah. very is very subtle, you know. So, did you think you were going to get married again? Uh yeah, probably. You did from all I'm very, along. I mean, I wasn't sure, and I got to a point where I felt like, yeah, I could. All right, I could be alone because, um, I mean, in my life, I I lived with roommates, I lived alone, and when I lived alone, at least when I was younger. Um, I found, I f- found that I preferred living with room, uh, roommates, not, not just anybody, but people that I like, mm-hmm. I'd rather have somebody in the house. Um, and I, I did think for a while, like, yeah, I could, I guess I could, I could, you know, I wouldn't, yeah, I, I, you know, I thoughts like, will I ever be able to live solo? Can I ever cope with being alone in this world? You know, and then you like, yeah, yeah, you'll be fine. Um, but I, uh, I like marriage. I don't have, I don't find it confining. I find it, uh, I, 
I, I find it exciting. I find it way more interesting to uh, hunker down with one person and figure out the nuances and subtleties rather than a constant cavalcade of different people. Mm -hmm. um, that's not, I, you know, it's fun, but it's not interesting uh, in a way. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I didn't, you know. Yeah. If I'd met somebody who didn't want to get married but wanted to, you know, be committed, that's fine. It's that not would like, be fine too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, you know, with with marriage, it exists for a reason, and I, like we we all got together whether we know it or not, and our ancestors got together and said there ought to be this this sort of deal that people make, and then they make and they take that deal to the state. And they put it on a piece of paper and the state okays what they're doing. And there's something about that that we, and I think it's because it really makes it real. It really makes it like you not only have made a commitment to each other, but you've made a commitment to like the tribe of mankind by using the state as a proxy for it. Like, you know, here you go, universe. We put it in writing, we're together, and that has weight that, uh, you know, just like, you want to stick together? Okay. I mean, and there's plenty of people that have, you know, I'm just talking about for me, yeah, yeah. too. Um, but I also think I'm in the majority. <laughs> like, I think most, you know, I th most people that are coupled, I think, are married, at least, I don't know. In this country, I have no data on that. Yeah, I yeah, I don't I'm know. I'm about. thinking about. I don't know either. I really don't know. I feel like I, know, you know, for as far as like romantic couples living together, most of the people in my life they're married. You know. Yeah. As I go, if I go down, but a is list, everybody pairing off for life, kind of, or for the long term as well? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I anybody's mean, definition of yeah, you know, of it is. And it's, I mean, and, and it's, I, it's all you're all. It's all like. You set out with the best of intentions, but uh, you know, right, right. Stuff changes. So what about what about having a two and a, you said two and a half year two old and daughter? Half year old. So uh, did you ever think um, of that that you would have that again? Because your kids are how old? They're what late teens, right? No, no. My son is going to be twenty two next month. Oh, okay. Or later this month. It's November now. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, he's going to be twenty two at the end of the month, and my daughter's seventeen. Um, and no, I didn't, I mean, from dating and, you know, I'm dating grown up women and lots of grown up women have kids. Uh -huh. So I was, I always thought that that might, you know, I might meet somebody with a kid. I feel like um, you would really enjoy that. Like having, I feel like you're a good I like, dad. I like, yeah. I, well, thank you. I, and I, I do like it and I do, um, and it's important to me and I, you know, take it very seriously, but, you know, not boring seriously, but I, you know, I like, I don't push to get into her life and I just kind of want to be there for her steady, but it's also, I'm remembering all the fun things you get to do, mm -hmm. you know, with a two and a half year old. Yeah, so know. cute. And maybe like the second time around, it's, you can relax a little bit more and, and enjoy it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm more... I mean, from one from the first to the second, you calm down. I mean, yeah. I, a couple of years ago, apologized to my son because I was like, "You're the first. You were the first one. Yeah. So we had no idea. Well, everything that was new with you was new to us too. So well, they call them. You know, they're like the first pancake. Have yes, you heard exactly. That? <laughs> you always ruin the first one. <laughs> exactly, yeah. but then you really get um, the other ones. Yeah, perfectly. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, we definitely were more. Yeah relaxed with the Are second you... one and now I, there's just like a lot of stuff that uh yeah I, i'm I've, I've also learned i i've found the, the calmness that you need because i got in you know i got into this relationship and there's a two and a half year old and all right and then i start to interface and i had a i had my father of almost adult children level of patience and it, you know, oh, to, like, oh yes, 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 I had yes. To, or I guess yeah, ratchet but, it back yeah, up. Yeah, ratchet it back up to be like, no, no, it takes this level. Right. Uh, will you just stop? You know, right. Just um, put the hat on. Just you know, get in the car. Get yeah. in the car. Get in the car. 
get out of the car, get out of the, you know, just every uh -huh. freaking thing. And so you got to, you know, you have to like, yeah, lock in this level of like, I'm not going to let it bug me. Um, and, but I also too, like, there's just like a lot of, I mean, it's not like I'm the, cause I, uh, there's a lot of like particulars about that. I don't know about like baby stuff, you know, like, what that you forgot, you mean, or no, that you weren't well, involved kind of with? that I forgot. No, no, no. But just like, what is that rash, you know, kind of oh, okay. thing, you know, and like, what do you put on that rash, you know, with that kind of rash, uh, or you know, or like, it's usually, uh, yeah, like aquaphor. What kind of cough medicine can you give a kid? You know, that kind right, of thing. Right, right. Um, and I, so I have to look it up now, but, um, because my, my fiance doesn't know me. One of the first times that I ever really stepped in for like to be the hammer about like just bedtime is what it ended up being. Um, and it was like, <laughs> Her, like when I, when I, and it was just a matter of me saying, no, you're going to bed and then picking her up and putting her into bed. And the, her, the look on her face of just like, who the F do you think? And then the, the, one of those screams that like where she's silent for 10 seconds, you know, cause she's made such a, <gasps> you know, like just, you know, hugest show of like, what the F is going on, mom? Right. What did um, you bring in here? Yeah. And I came out and I said, I, I put her to bed and, you know, and talked her down. And she's like, she can be like a really reasonable little kid if you, you know, and you can, and she's, she'll turn on a dime from a complete mess to like, okay, you know. Um, but I came out and I said to Jenna, I was like, I'm sorry if I, you know, stepped over uh, you know on your toes or anything and she's like oh what are you kidding she goes i have no idea what i'm doing she goes like, that's right it's her first, is it her first yeah, child yeah it's her first child and she's raised her alone so yeah she's like step in whatever you want she's like i don't have any idea what i'm doing right also because she's so young that you really do get to be her full-on dad yeah. without like emotional complications that you might have had yes if she were older yes yes for definitely. both of them definitely I mean, yeah. I mean, it just, yeah. She, yeah. And so Jen probably wants you to be, I don't know, I don't know your relationship, but she probably wants you to be full parent. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah. That's part of the deal. Yeah. And that was, that's always been part of the deal for both of us from our first date, you know? I mean, uh, it, I didn't have, I, any conversation about, about, her included her daughter, mm. you know, any mm -hmm. sort of any, any, anything. I, I never once tried to pretend like it wasn't like the two of them weren't one thing. Right. You know? That's interesting because when people start dating, sometimes they, they probably sometimes wonder, when do I mention that there's a child? Yeah. Right. But yeah, she, yeah. you knew right away. Right? Uh, and that yeah. was the way and to I mean, do I, it. I, yeah. I get, I got kids. Yeah. You know, they're older. Get all the stuff up front because, you yeah, know, I don't. Yeah. So how do you feel about having older kids? Does it make you feel different or like, is it weird? I have older kids too. So yeah. sometimes I'm like, it is so weird that I have kids as old as I do. It, it, yes. But I mean, but it's like one of those things too, where it, it's at, it's at times ridiculously weird. Like that, you know, like that I have an adult son you mm -hmm. know that that's that's an you know an adult like there's no he's you know out in the world and finishing college and you know he's a grown man when he because he's still you know in my head he's still my baby um and and uh but and then also too it becomes really normal you know like you just you, if you're not like stepping back uh, from it and you know if you're just in it it's all pretty normal yeah sure it is it is I said this the some of the weird stuff is and or some of the like more sort of the stuff that occurs to me that's just kind of different is um, you know I always I always I, I feel like the the deal uh, for parenting is it's about the kid 
and that it's not about you. It's about the kid. And it's only about you in that it, the, in the ways that it can make a better kid. Like, you got to think of me. You, like, you have to think of my feelings, your dad, because I want to make sure you think about other people's right. feelings out in the right, world. Right, so right. I want you to treat yeah, it's me in, relation. in a way yeah. that I would like you to treat other people. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's always, you know, you never, people tell me how polite and considerate my children are and sometimes i'm like really oh yeah well they probably save that for the other people yeah they're yeah but they're watching you fine with that yeah be nice to other people and be less nice to me that's better that that, i guess than the opposite so um and i also so i i do think you're kind of like uh working towards you know making yourself obsolete like you know you're you're taking this creature that needs you for everything and working on making them not need you. And now that like, you know, my son is at a point of like, and I mean, he still needs me, but but just this feeling of like, oh, oh, okay. You're going to move out and fall in love with somebody and live somewhere else and uh, just start a whole grown up life. Huh? That's it, right? You're not going to live here anymore then. Oh, okay. And it's it's weird. It's kind of... There's this feeling I'm like, well, wait a minute. Where, where, where are you going? Um, you know, it's like I think my mom did a lot. You know, my mom started out with my, because she had two kids in two batches with two different husbands, me and my brother, and then I have a twin brother and sister who are nine years younger. And with me and my brother, I think she was very, go out, do whatever you want, don't worry about me. And with my brother and sister, came around and, she, you know, nine years later, and she's like, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> yes. She's looking at a truly empty nest. She and she's gets going it like, now. Wait a minute. You know, yeah. where are y'all going? Um, so that's a weird thing about having uh, adult kids. And the other thing is having to. And I mean, I, I don't. Is having to really like let go of. Uh, of worrying about their formation as a human being. Like, it's done. Yeah. Like, you know, like the cake is baked. So go turn the oven off. Like, just, it's... Right. Stop checking it. You don't have to dip the knife in. Yeah. Or or think, or just think like, oh my God, I noticed that happening with them and Mm. I have to intervene Mm -hmm. and do... There's some, yeah. You got to... There's a relief in that, though, I think, also. There's a relief in it, but it's also, I think, it's not healthy to keep it up. It's no, not yeah. healthy to, like, and I know people who have parents who never stop, who never stop saying, what are you doing that for? You're doing it all wrong, you know? And how do you think those, right, those adults feel? It's terrible. You don't yeah. want to be that. And you, yeah. And, and it's you, very like, common. You don't want to be around your parents. Yes. Then, well, you wonder why. That, yeah. there's, that's very common, I yeah, think. Yeah. And it always has been. It's nothing new. It's not yeah. just the helicopter parents who came in and right. started doing that. It was like people have been, parents have been criticizing their adult children for generations yes. and generations. Yes. So, you know, you I'm just don't want to do like that. it's like their birthright or something, too. That's. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. So I asked you about the best time. What about the hardest time? One of the hardest times in your life. Mm. Uh, well, the divorce was by far the worst of the worst. Um, and, uh, I, I, you know, I don't want to say much about it in particular other than the fact that, you know, we were married for 25 years And, uh, really, you know, everything sounds like a cliche, but it's all true. Mostly fantastic, wonderful times. And then it just stopped working. And then, and to admit that it stopped working and walk away and not live in the same house as my children is the freaking worst. It's just the worst. And, um, and there's that. And so that's that. That's all I want to say about that. Um, but the, I had, a, in 2008, uh, I had a rough time. I, uh, well, I had a very stressful, I, 
I was working in New Zealand on the, this really fun job and really loved working in New Zealand, but it was a tremendous strain because uh, my kids were uh, eight and three. Mm. And, you know, and I was gone for a couple of months, a couple of three months, just a tremendous strain on everybody. And, uh, and when I, and I, uh, and when I came home, uh, you know, like there was like the stress hangover was still kind of in the air. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like you just shake it off. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I. I mean, I don't want to go into all of the details, but I woke up one morning uh, very ill and found out, and I, I didn't even go to the, I didn't even go to the hospital, but uh, I uh, had had a stroke, uh, and I was, um, uh, let's see, I was, what would that make me? 2008? 42. Oh, wait. Were you born in... Well, what I don't know. Nineteen sixty-six, thirty-four plus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you had so, a stroke yeah, and really you didn't young. know. I, I yeah, I woke up and I was just really dizzy and I tried to go to the I, in the morning and tried to go to the bathroom and was violently threw up and waited till nine and called the doctors and they said, oh, it sounds like you got an inner ear infection and I called a couple, you know, two doctors and yeah, the inner ear infection and I just stayed in bed and kind of hunkered down for the weekend and got eventually better, but still felt like kind of dizzy. And it's just, it sounds so dumb now. It's just, but I mean, it was my first, but what do you mean it was you feel my like first it mortality dumb? scare. You know, no, I did not call the ambulance. Yeah, but it does seem like, why would you think that when yeah. you're 42? Yeah, yeah. How, wh- who's, who, would anybody of that cross anybody's mind? I don't, I, unless they're like, does. unless they're hypochondriac. Now it would. I, it doesn't happen twice. You know, like now if I felt yes. that same way, I'd be like, yeah, put me in a back of a pickup truck. I, I, just get me to the hospital. But not back um, then when you're 42 yeah. and we're feeling healthy. And when you bounce back, you know, when I'm like out of bed the next night, you know, yeah. but even I knew, you know, and it's like inner ear infection. I, I don't think I had anything to eat for a day and a half. And when I finally, I went downstairs and had a bowl of Cheerios and I took the spoon and I hit the side of my cheek with the spoon. Like I didn't get the spoon into my mouth. And I was like, boy, this stuff is crazy. This inner ear infection. But I went. Was that what did it? What no, told you? I, no, I'm, still no. I, I went. I no. I Monday. I just like you know. I got to go see the doctor in person. And I went first to the ENT, and he's like, "This is not an inner ear infection." I went to my doctor, and he said, "Let's get an MRI." Found I had a stroke. Okay. Yeah. We'll go to the. You know, went to Cedars, did a day and a half of tests, and I because I'd had a stroke, they had me in the ICU and. Lots of nurses coming in and double taking and being like, "What? Why are what? You know, expecting somebody to be with tubes sticking out of them, and instead it's me sitting up in bed, you know, uh, doing the crossword." And uh, so wild. And it turned out what it was was sleep apnea. I had terrible, terrible sleep apnea. They tested me. I mean, I you know, uh, I'm overweight and that makes my blood pressure high, but uh, you know, I'm. It's not terrible. And Wait, they found out you had sleep apnea that was the, at that at, point. At that point. And was that related to the stroke? That's pro. Well, they can't say that's what caused the stroke. But every, I mean, uh. I, it was actually kind of in cardiovascular terms, it was kind of great because I got to be, re- they really checked under the hood of my heart and my, you know, arteries and veins and uh, said, you know, you're. That's all good. You're good. Yeah, there's no plaque. There's no buildup. And then it was just, but I mean, I was really falling. I was not breathing for like a minute at a time, numerous, numerous times a night. And I guess that just can slow down your blood pressure. And then it probably just some blood vessels collapsed uh, in my brain. Oh, that makes sense, I guess. But that was, I mean, the, 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 the stro- that 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 part sucked. Yeah, that whole part of my you know my life yeah. and 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 uh, it it was really tough. It was really scary and really tough. And and then I mean and there was just there was it wasn't just that one thing too. It was like other stuff happening at the same time. You know, just coincidentally, just coincidentally. And then you know, and like probably a month after 
I have the stroke. Uh, I'm wrestling with my son, my now too large to be thrown over my head son in the pool, trying to throw him over my head. And I dropped him on my own head and ping. And, you know, like, and, and I got out of the pool and I said to my ex-wife, I said, like, this is going to be months. And it was months. Well, what, what, what do you mean ping? I mean, I see you, like, pointing your neck. What like happened? Like a, 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 a disc, a, oh, you know. Oh, God. Like a, a, a sprained disc in my neck. Uh, and ended up having to finally get an epidural, you know, like, right in where they put you out and shoot something right mm. into your spine. But it's like. I didn't need to have that a month after the stroke. Right. Like, I didn't need to, like, no longer be able to sleep prone. I had to prop up pillows and sleep like, like you know, basically, you know, like a broom being le- leaned in a corner, you know. Um, was so your son was okay? Just, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah. No, he was. He was yeah, yeah, because he, he was little and whatever. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, all I did was drop him on my head yeah. in the pool. I didn't do anything to him. Right. So it wasn't like his head went on no, your head. No, no, it, it was his It was right. his body. Got it. You know. So it was only you who took yeah. the blow. Yeah. So it was all just happening at once. This is how things happen in life, yeah. I feel like. They all come at yeah. once. Or the good things sometimes, too, all seem to come at once. They do. Yeah, it is weird. And I mean... I look at my life and there's lots of times when, uh, and especially with work things, uh, and we're putting that to the test these days, but that there's always something that comes along. Like just, you know, you're you're on an ice flow and you're floating and it seems like this flow you're on is going to melt to nothing and, oh, look, another one. And you can just step off. And there have just been plenty of times when, like, a nice paycheck came in like right when, you right when it needed to and you know and like oh okay and then you know you can just kind of progress uh it's a little slow right now so i can yeah. use another one of those right it's, it's just so I mean, is it hard to, like what do you do how do you the where you are now career-wise like i do you feel and you said it's one of the best times for you yes like do you are there some times where you're like where's that flow like where's that ice flow i'm ready oh, to step uh, well yeah, but it's more it's more just a feeling of uh, put me in coach. Um, and, you know, I mean, I've been doing some guest star stuff, but I, uh, I like making television. I want to make television. I want yeah. somebody to put me in some television. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm trying to develop things, but that's like saying, you know, I'm wishing for world peace. Like, that's great. You know, you're... Is it really? Co- yeah, it's really... Is it really? It's really hard to get too invested in any idea that you have because the chances of it just becoming nothing with a phone call uh, are just so great. It's just like, honest, you know, your ideas are like uh, sea turtles. Like most of them will be eaten and only a couple will make it to maturity. So you got to be ready for those numbers. And uh, have a lot. And you have to have a lot, yes, I guess, then, yes, right? And to, always be yes. coming And I'm not that. even, like, I'm not even, like, I'm not a push-myself-forward kind of person. Like, I'm not. Oh, I read something you said. I remember. Thank you okay. for reminding me. I've lived, oh, oh, something about having, I've lived a reactive life. Yes. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. That's what you're saying right yes. now. That's what I'm saying right now. Yeah. No, I, I, I kind of like go with the flow of things. I don't. Uh, things it, come to you. Yeah. You're lucky. Yeah. But you really like those things. Yeah. And you want to do them. Yeah. So you want them to keep coming. Yes. And I and I I have not had a lot of success with um, just like my own solo idea that I'm pushing to, you know. I've usually I've usually kind of like paired up with somebody that kind of had something already in the works or got together with somebody at the very beginning of something. Um, And I just I just I think everybody wants to be a great auteur. You know, if you have the ability to to write and act and, you know, can do other things and you think about entertainment in in a bigger way. Everybody wants to be an auteur, but I, you know, I don't, 
they're 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 rare for a reason. And I think mm-hmm. sometimes I'm like, I know I'm good at what I do, and I um I'm good at making television. I'm good at and not just the television that comes out the other end, but I'm good to work with. Like I, you know, I make I like a fun workplace. I like I'm gonna go, you know, I'm leaving the house leaving my family to go be with this bunch of people that have arbitrarily gotten together. And so we're going to have a good time. We're going to have a fun day because otherwise, why did we leave the house? You yes. Know? Yes. Um, and it's really easy. I feel like to be not easy, but that's the way to be It's pretty easy, right? It's pretty easy. There's so many assholes in the world that you're just like, why are you yeah, working why? so hard? Right. Just if you just chill out a little, everyone's life will benefit. What are you doing, you know? Yeah. So, but you also would just happily go on TV and not be part of the, be an O-Tour it, it, it depends. It depends. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It's all situational. I mean, if I'm on, you know, you know, Dumb Dumb and his gorilla pal, you know, and it's, I I might not, you know, yeah, I'll how take do you feel about check, that? All right. But, uh, you know. Um, if you could be on any series right now, just jump into it. It's already on. What would you, what would you uh, jump into? Fargo. I would love to be on a, a Fargo. And those are, uh, what's fun about those is they're, all, you know, every season yeah. is different, but the same. And those just seem like, I just love those. And in terms of just how weird they are and uh, how well done they are. But um, a, a show like that, or you know, or uh, you know, I mean, I'm aiming high here, but like Better Call Saul, you know, well, that it's not on been, the air anymore. Yeah, but I mean, but a show <laughs> yeah, of I that it, caliber, because that show. Well, they're making is, the new one with Ray Seahorn. I I know. Can you get in on I that? Know, well, you know, it's just it's just beginning. Uh, somebody, yeah, I'm sure. I'm I I uh, I supposedly somebody on Team Richter is, is going to be on that. You know already, so they I'm sure are and will be and work work and the I deal. Also probably should I'll, on the after I leave here, I'll call them on the drive home. Say like, hey, well, by the way, what about the that Ray show Sheehan thing? Yeah, that Vince Gilligan yeah, show. Yeah. So, all right, well, I'm going to ask you my last question. It's two parts. Okay. The first part is, what is the common misconception about you? Like, what's the image you think a lot of people have of you that's maybe not accurate? Jeez, I'm not good at that kind of thing because, like, I don't know what people what people think of me. Uh, yeah, I mean, this, you know, this is probably, this is a lot more about me than them, but I think there's a lot of people um, that think that I, you know, showed up an hour before the show started and, sat down and just, you know, just lottie dod my way through the show. And, uh, and, and that's just, that's not true. You know, I mean, I was a producer on the show and that was all, uh, due to the graciousness and generosity of Conan O'Brien willing to share that much, uh, you know, whether it's screen time or just, input you know he's a he's a he's a you know not he's a brilliantly funny guy but he also is like an excellent television producer and he understands uh there's no you know it's a it's a it's a group effort yeah and that and to be too you know there's a i just there's a lot of there's a lot of talk show hosts that wouldn't let somebody sit next to him then you know period yeah. much less period. allow them to be seen yeah. put much less somebody that is not just kind of a a goofball you know somebody that's also going to be a, like a serious addition to the mm-hmm. show and but- and also you know like i i i saw these pictures of uh, when Iggy, you know, David Bowie kind of saved Iggy Pop. Uh, Iggy Pop was, was, you know, wasting his life as a junkie, I think, and, uh, had stopped making music and David Bowie sort of took it upon himself to go to Berlin and straighten him out. And they made a couple albums and Iggy's tour after that, after like turning his life around and putting out a new album, 
David Bowie went on tour and played piano. Just played piano, you know, and it's just that's such a mind-blowingly generous thing for somebody with a very similar skill set mm -hmm. to go, I love you, I want you to be out there, I'm going to sit over here and just play piano. And I think that, you know, it's it's not the same dynamic, but, you know, but I think Conan has that same generosity. He let me sit next to him when, you know... I'm capable of zingers mm. and there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of comedy people that don't want another zinger machine sitting next to them. You know, right. like I want to be in charge of all the zingers. Yeah, so, yeah. um, you know, uh, that's a lot of credit. Yeah. I give, yeah. A, I give, I just, I, I told him as the show wound down, this is by far the most valuable thing that you've given me is that you invited me into the creative process of this show and trusted me and, you know, made me your consigliere. Uh, mm -hmm. What's yeah. not to love about being a consigliere? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, and who is Andy Richter, for real? Um, oh, gosh. He's a very well-meaning boy. Uh, fairly hardworking, but also likes to, you know, You know, if you take your eye off him, you might stop for a minute and have a little bit of fun. Um, but I think, well, fun is a big part of, of who I am and what is important to me. And uh, and I had a, my mom's sister uh, passed away recently and she was my favorite relative. And I kind of did a little, you like, <laughs> I didn't know I was going to be doing it, but at a little family gathering, uh I took some of her ashes back to Illinois and there was a family gathering and uh, my mom just said, get up here and say something. And one of the things that I said was that she insisted on having fun all the time. Like if she'd come to town and it wasn't like I'm here for a visit and I got a lot going on in my life. I'm, I'm distracted. It was here I am. Let's get started with cooking and laughing and going places and you know um and that uh that had a profound effect on me and i still try to i mean i'm not like a parade float going around all the time but i do i i, I insist on some fun and uh, you know every day uh, you know wherever you can have it if you might as well be laughing and having fun um but I'm also somebody too that uh, had a, had a lot of a lot of depression in my life, and so I kind of uh, it, it's much it's much better now. But it definitely kind of shaped just my worldview and sort of um, always. You know, I'm never quite, I, I was depressed enough in my life and I got so used to being depressed and being around depressed people that like, I'm, I now, I don't know if I'll ever be absolutely sure that when I look at a sunset that I'm feeling what other people are feeling when they look at the sunset and they go, oh my God, it's gorgeous, uh, you know, and they, you know, swoon or go, oh, it's, I'm, you know, I look at it and I go, it's pretty, you know, and I don't know if. I'm, you know, if that's like some emotional stuntedness, like some numbing that I have, or whether I'm feeling everything else, everything everyone else feels, and I'm just, you know, I just have like a negative attitude about my own ability to process joy. Um, so, uh, but I, you know, again, that's, I've, I've worked really hard at that. And, uh, and now if I feel joy, I go, okay, there you go. There's joy right there. It doesn't make me fall down on the ground, but I can be like, no, no, they're right there. That's, that's it. That's it. And whatever you're feeling right now, concentrate on that and feel more of that when things like this happen. So, um, Oh, that's it. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. I was a therapist, so I'm going to analyze you. Oh, all right. It seems to me like you do feel emotions. Mm -hmm. 
You know, I don't get the sense that you don't, but not that I would know this in an hour of talking right, sure, to you. Sure. But also some things move certain people more than they move others. Yeah. So how about your impending marriage? Uh, um, Does it do it? Oh, yeah. But I am reminding myself a lot of how, you know, noticing how good it feels. Yeah, you see it. And you yeah. you feel that you experience and that say, feeling. Yeah, yeah. And say, yeah. Notice so it's maybe more right of being able to be aware of it and see it. Maybe you already have it, but yeah. you don't acknowledge it or you should not acknowledge it as much. It, yeah, probably it's basic yeah. mindfulness stuff. Yeah, mindfulness. If, yeah, yeah. That if I, you mm -hmm. know, took a mindfulness class, it'd be, oh, yeah, that. that yeah, right yeah, there, right. That's what I'm talking about. All right, I have to, you, it's 2.15, you have to go. But, okay. I, but I want to thank you for doing this. Oh, sure. Thank you very much. I was, appreciate it. Sure, sure. It was a good conversation, yeah. Okay. No, like this is the, like I say, this is the kind of, conversations that I like to have and that are fun and interesting to me because it is and because I'm basically you know sitting here talking to you I'm basic I'm I am treating it as a therapy session like you ask me a question and I you know respond to it like maybe with the particulars but I also kind of think about how it makes me feel and you know and what effect it's had on me and how it changed me and stuff and um uh, it's therapy and it's just, it's the most interesting conversations you can have w between human beings. In my estimate, it's the ones I like to have. A lot of people, they like to talk about football and stuff, but I, you know, I'd rather talk about like, why do you dislike your mother? Like that. Exactly. Oh, give it to me. Yes, tell me everything from the beginning. That's how I roll. Check out Andy and me on my Instagram and Facebook feeds. Watch parts of this talk on my YouTube or Facebook watch channel. Remember to visit betterhelp.com slash really famous to get started with a new therapist and get 10% off your first month. Links to everything are in today's show notes. Thanks for hanging with me and Andy and I hope you enjoyed this little mini therapy session. I'm Kara. I will talk to you soon.